Hey everybody, it is Record Time with Chris, episode 14. And before I show you the records and CDs and even a cassette that I want to show you, I've got a discussion topic. And today's discussion topic is how to have a better record store day next time. Well, everybody knows that the most frustrating thing about record store day is that sometimes people can't get all the records that they wanted to buy. The problem is not so much people in line buying them to scalp them later. The problem is that somebody somewhere along the chain underestimated how many copies were required. So you have a lot of influence over that and the way you can help us figure out how many copies are required, whether it's your store or the record label that's deciding how many make for the whole country, is to buy at independent stores as often as you can. When it's convenient, you know, I know that it, you probably can't do it all the time. I think some people come pretty close because that's how everybody knows how much to make and the stores don't know how many people are likely to show up for that. So you can help us all a lot and help yourself with that. It's just, you know, it's just tricky. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to know, especially, and I think the biggest frustration comes when there are, when an artist who is not big at indie stores has a record store day release because uh, they're f everybody guesses wrong. You don't really know. Like Nobody really knew how many Miley Cyrus people were going to show up on Saturday. Well, it turns out that uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a lot of Miley Cyrus fans were looking for those record store day pieces, and they still are. In fact, like one of the busiest pages on our website even now is the Miley Cyrus product page, and we've been out, I don't know, when did we run out? Monday? We've been out forever. So, well, that's that. Let's look at some of the stuff. Now, because of Record Store Day and all the Record Store Day videos, I missed a couple things I would have loved to have talked about before. And one of them is, so the 50th anniversary edition of Odyssey and Oracle. It was just released last month, and there's no vinyl version of this because they, uh, Verez Sarabang, which is the label that's done this, has the... Uh, they had the record out in, on vinyl anyway. It's been out for a couple of years. So you may remember that around the year 2000, the Odyssey and Oracle was issued with a whole bunch of bonus tracks. Now, this was done by different people than were involved in this one. The new one is actually done by uh, Andrew Sandoval and Carrie Mansfield. And what I th think they're trying to do is, is sort of reorganize the Zombies catalog into something a little more logical than the box sets and compilations and things before. So a bunch of the bonus tracks on the old Odyssey and Oracle were taken from the unreleased album R.I.P. Well, what Andrew and Carrie decided to do was not just release a few bonus tracks from R.I.P., but last year they released this for Record Store Day. I think it was last year, maybe it was two years ago. 2015, yeah, we got R.I.P., maybe it was Black Friday, and then they did a wide release of the CD. So instead of like the four songs that are on here, you get 12. And it also makes more sense in terms of when the songs were recorded and finished and what the band was planning to do before they broke up. So, without the tracks from R.I.P. on the new one, what do you get? Well, you get, that leaves them room for new bonus tracks that I don't know if all these are unheard, but they're definitely ones that weren't on that and they might have been on an out of print box set or something. You also get, it is a, it's a new master. I compared the two of them, and I think the new one, it's very similar, uh, but it, there's maybe just a little more definition, like they either, well, the transfer technology would be better now than before. Maybe it's a new transfer, or maybe they have one generation better tapes or, or, or something like that. You still get, like the old one, you still have a booklet with a long essay. This one is actually written by Andrew Sandoval himself, who, who was the, uh, I think he's kind of the zombies guy. He, he may have even, um, well, he's remixed some of these, uh, you know. It, anyway, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good release. If you're a zombies fan, it's worth it for the uh, seven 
bonus tracks. And if you missed the rose-colored 7-inch on Record Store Day, well, the music that was on that is, is, is on here. All right, I showed you this. It's already been out for a while. They also just released another Zombies one. There was a Zombies Greatest Hits album. And of, of course, there have been Zombies compilations before. But what makes this one a little different is, well, first of all, you get this nice artwork. This is on the you know, heavy stock cardboard. But these are the, uh, when possible, they used the mono single mixes. So even if you have these songs on the albums, it's cool to have a slightly different version. And of course, these are 60 songs when, where there can be some really sweet differences between mono and stereo. Another, we're going to have a lot of soundtracks in here. And one that came out a week before Record Store Day is the Mad Max Trilogy soundtrack. And this is, again, just coincidentally another Perez Saraband release. And it's on each three records, because it was the three original movies. You can see here they have the Road Warrior artwork. I think that that could be Road Warrior or Mad Max, but I'm guessing it's supposed to indicate Mad Max. And here we have, inside, we've got... You see Tina Turner there, so you know that is Beyond Thunderdome. Well, they've got the original covers inside, and let me show you the records. So the Mad Max soundtrack is on kind of this steely gray vinyl. Road Warrior, which is my favorite of the three, is also my favorite color. They call this sand colored, and I think it kind of looks like that. Now, if you actually, these soundtracks haven't been available for a while, I think, and I listened to all three of them in a row yesterday, and it's really interesting to hear how, just how the, the move, the, like the ideas and the execution moved forward so far from Mad Max to The Road Warrior. The same thing, the same guy was used for the soundtrack, Brian May, who's not the guy from Queen, he's a soundtrack composer with the same name. His ideas of what to do with the soundtrack kind of evolved with the so Road Warrior is more exciting and there's much more menace to it and the soundtrack does the same thing. So that it's quite jarring if you're listening to all three in a row when you put on the Beyond Thunderdome soundtrack and there's Tina Turner uh, with a couple songs and then an instrumental one more 80s pop stuff but still a great package and it's a good price for it's a good price for three records. Tina Turner, the Tina Turner one is, is black so I'm not going to show it to you. Now, I want to have a little giveaway. This is the, the soundtrack that it's orange, orange Sunshine. It's been out a week or two. The movie is, you know, so you have a nice, well, it looks like a sun. It is orange. Matt Costa did the music, and it's got kind of a, oh, there's, this, there's a nice insert, by the way. And it's, he's trying to get a 60s vibe to it, and I think he achieves it. So if you want a copy of this, this very copy, just put your name, just, you know, put a comment down in the comments section and I will choose somebody and contact you to get your address. And that reminds me, the other stuff, yes, I know I need to send some things out, but I will. And I got a couple of other things to give away later. All right, let's talk about what's out April 28th, which is today. So a couple, just a couple other interesting releases. The Elton John album, the live one that sold out so quickly on Record Store Day, a one LP version of that is out now. So if you missed it, at least you have a chance to get most of the music. Mew, the band Mew, has a, the indie exclusive on that is a 3D cover. I haven't seen it, but it's probably cool. The mock-up looked good. Um, Charles Manson Sings, is there isn't, somebody's reissuing that. There's a Mike and Mechanics album, Mike Rutherford, the new one, a new one. Um, prog band, uh, Arion, A-Y-R-E-O-N, who are more, you know, the prog metal, but they're more on the proggy side than the metal, I think. Their new album, uh, the, they're the, there's a version that has a DVD with a 5.1 mix of the album, and if you're familiar with the band, they're totally made for surround sound, so if you can get that, you'll, you know, if you think you're into it, you'll really enjoy it. And one other rec, one other CD I want to mention, the band called Mammothor, M-A-M-A-T-H, Mammothor, Mammothor. They're a New England band, and that's just good old-fashioned 70s style hard rock metal. Very cool. What I've, I'm going to actually, when I finish this video, 
Uh, it's uploading. I'm going to go downtown to the Bull Moose, and I'm going to be buying that myself. I just found out about it. it. Sounds great. And oh, a couple other things. So there's a Feist album out today, and uh, indie stores got these cassette singles. It's the first two songs from the uh, that are on the album anyway, but this is kind of a cool keepsake. We got them too late to get them out to the Bull Moose store, so we won't have them, but maybe the store where you shop will have them. We'll get them out later. There's also one last piece of vinyl news. Sylvan Esso, we already think is out today. We've already sold a ton of this. The, the record I sold great, and it's uh, you won't know what color you get, but there are some on blue, some on green, some on red. No, blue, yeah, red, blue, and green. I think those are the colors. I only have the CD here to show you, but you get a nice booklet, and it's um, it's like you know electro pop, but they're they've got some different ways of handling it that I found pretty interesting. There are two soundtracks that we're still taking pre-orders for that I want to tell you about because they are going to be very exciting and they're related. So the first one is, so the Blue Velvet soundtrack is coming back on vinyl. It's black vinyl. And I listened to this after uh, Beyond Thunderdome yesterday, and it's a totally different mood. And it is one of the creepiest soundtracks you could possibly listen to. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but there are a lot of like 60s pop songs, like the song Blue Velvet. Uh, Dennis Hopper is yelling, Candy Colored Clown, which is the opening lyric to the Roy Orbison song that's on here. And it's just, it's creepy as hell. So anyway, if you if you collect the George, the George Lynch, David Lynch, George Lynch, that's the guy from Dawkins, isn't he? If you, if you collect the David Lynch soundtracks, definitely want to get this. And if you just like, you know, it's, it's cool. And here's the big surprise. Just the other day, I saw that the Eraserhead soundtrack was going to be reissued on vinyl. It's silver vinyl, and it includes a 7-inch. The B-side of the 7-inch is a song that was prepared for the movie, but was never isn't in the movie. They, George uh, David Lynch just just mixed it. I happen to have this is crazy. Can you believe? I actually I found in a cutout bin in the late '80s. I found the soundtrack. I found this for. Six ninety nine. The name Orpheus is the record store. I don't know that probably in Rochester or Syracuse, I guess maybe Boston. Um, but this is if you haven't heard this, it's there's a little bit of organ, the Fetz Waller stuff that comes up through the the radiator. Of course, there's that wonderful song in heaven, everything is fine. And but it's mostly just noise. It's mostly just, but it's you know it's good noise. It's good noise. Very exciting, very exciting. All right, two more giveaways. Again, just leave a note down at the bottom if you want. I have here Ben Folds 5, whatever and ever, video portrait. You've got the video for the battle of who could care less and video portrait, whatever that is. It is approximately 13 minutes long, promo only, not for sale. Cannot sell it to you, but I will give it to you. This was for sale, this is Jane's Addiction, and it's called Something shocking. It also says the fans video Soul Kiss. This is a little bit longer. It's got the mountain song and I don't know Some other stuff It'd be fun if you're into that. I liked it when I was whatever a teenager Maybe you'll like it now if you're a fan. I don't need it anymore. So Hey until next time make sure you listen to something awesome and you know in heaven Everything is fine.